Hello everybody. So today what I want to do is go over my secondary heat source and this is my backup. I also use it when the temperature gets into the teens to give the heat pump a little bit of a break so it's not running constantly. This particular heat pump is getting older and we're trying not to replace it as of yet. Um, and that's one thing with the requirement for us to have when we purchase another home is that we're either going to have a fireplace that works off of natural gas or we're going to have a wood burning fireplace or we're going to get one that is suitable to put a pot belly stove in or the old fashioned uh, wood stove. We called them pot belly stoves back in uh, when I was a kid growing up in the mountains. That's what we use for heat. So one of the things I've done is I went through and cleaned the, the unit up it's a radiating heat, all it radiates heat all the way around, so you don't want to put it near any furniture. I try to keep about three feet away from everything. But I went through and cleaned cobwebs up. Um, I've had this since 2008, so it's what, like 14 years, 13, 14 years. I've cleaned the wick, or trimmed the wick a couple of times, and the manual tells you how to take it apart so that you can do that. Um, I've never had to replace it, so that's a good thing. I, I, it's not something that gets used that often. Now, if, I mean, if this was our primary heat source, then yes, I would probably have already replaced that wick. But I don't because of that. Now, I, last year I did leave it with a little under half a tank of fuel, so I checked that to make sure it didn't smell like varnish. Um, so I know that's good fuel. And I just kind of want to give it a burn in real quick before I depend on it because it's going to be getting really cold here in town here in a few days. Uh, one thing you are going to want to do if you do replace the wick is let it sit for at least 30 minutes. I believe the manual says one hour to absorb kerosene up into the wick. Um, that way it's not just burning and burning the wick away. So you might want to make sure you read your instructions on that. Um, if you could give it a, an entire day, that wouldn't hurt, but uh, that's not required. So on this particular model, it does have a bump sensor. So if I knock into it, it goes out. Now, one thing you want to make sure you do when you turn it down, turn it off to where you're going to blow it out or um, to when it's going to be off, open the little door you'll see down here. Open that door up and make absolutely sure that the fire has gone completely out. Sometimes uh, if your wick is not adjusted properly, which you should never have to adjust your wick, it should be adjusted from the factory. But if it isn't adjusted properly, it may stay lit in one small spot. So it, just throwing that out there. Uh, I've, like I said, I've used this for years when I've needed it. There have been several years I've not had to use it at all. So without any further hesitation, let me just uh, kneel down here which is something that's new for me here of late. I open up the door, I turn it, you're going to hear it going. And the batteries may not be strong enough from last year. So let me run grab, which I didn't and I should have, let me run grab a lighter. I will have to put some fresh batteries in it. So you just press down on your automatic lighter. There you go. Lights the wick. You make sure that your glow is centered on. And I always turn mine all the way down to start. You can start smelling the kerosene um, odor. I can also hear it. You might not be able to hear it, but I can hear it. Uh, it's really cool at night. If you turn off all the lights and just have the glow, it puts out a really nice glow, almost like a fire in a fireplace. But you want to just verify that the thing works. You don't have to let it run forever. And I'm sitting here looking at it. I can see the fire. Yeah, it's looking good. I just want to make sure that globe starts glowing red. That's all I'm looking for. Now, 
This model is safe for inside the home, and I would always recommend that you use a carbon monoxide detector, have those in various parts of your house. Um, this particular model is safe for indoor use. Make sure that the, whatever you use, if you're going to burn some type of fuel like this, that it is safe and it is clean. That's why I go through and clean everything up. I just take the grates and stuff off here, pull the covers off, just kind of wipe everything down. So I'm sure you can see the fire in it now. Let's turn this light off. Let me turn this other light off. There. What do you think? What you're looking for is a good, clean burn across it. You want it to be even. You don't want to have any spots that are not uh, not lit. And as it burns, what's going to happen is that sound that you're hearing now, that like a whopping sound, that will go away. And that's another reason why you want to let it burn. But the fact that the wife and I have such a small house, this heats the entire house with ease, and we typically only run it on low. So I don't turn it all the way up. So you see how that noise has gone away. You see how it's got a nice even burn on it. So let me turn the lights back on. That's exactly what I'm expecting to hear. Just a real fast pop. So eventually that's going to completely go away as the thing heats up and the globe is going to start glowing a real nice red. So uh, this particular model, and I'm, I can't say all of them, but this one is recommending you only run K1 kerosene. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the K1 and the K2, the difference is one's yellow, or uh, uh, excuse me, um, no, that's diesel fuel, never mind. I was going to say something totally different. Uh, K1 kerosene is what you find at most of your places that actually sell it. There's not very many places that sell this anymore. I used to, you could find it at your map codes, but they don't even have them anymore, even though they still have the signs out, which makes no sense. But anyhow, I hope you guys got something out of this video. Go ahead and check out your secondary heat source before you need it and make sure that everything's working. My third source, which I've already shown you a video on, is a little Mr. Buddy heater. Runs off two propane, two one pound propane cylinders. That's also another backup. So anyhow, if you got something out of it, give it a like, share it with your friends. Go check out American Prepping Academy. You will learn a lot of stuff, especially if you're a beginning prepper. Jay James put together some wonderful information there for you. Um, one thing that is important to note that if it absolutely, positively must be destroyed overnight, United States Marine Corps. Have a great day, guys.